Hi, my name's Simon. Um, I'm from the New England site and I have the privilege of sharing a, a few thoughts with you from Psalm uh, 31. Now, Psalm 31 is a psalm of lament. That means a psalm of grief, a psalm of sorrow. Um, for a flavour of the psalm, we won't go through every single verse, but have a look at verse 10. It says, for my life is spent with sorrow. This is David speaking. My life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. He describes years of his life just full of sighing. I just have years of sighing. It's not just days or hours or even weeks. It's years, years of sighing. This is lament. This is sadness in his life. Real lament. And um, the most lamentable experience that happened to any human being is recorded in this psalm because Jesus, our saviour, uses this psalm to um to to speak back to God his own words he says you see Psalm 31 verse 5 it says into your hands I commit my spirit and Jesus quotes those verses and says them to God whilst dying on the cross whilst paying the, the price and, the, and, and bearing the punishment for our sin he chooses to pick up words from this psalm of lament now that doesn't mean that every single verse here is about Jesus or that Jesus even would have quoted the whole psalm in his life. Um, for example, uh, verse 5 carries on to say, You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Now, Jesus didn't need redeeming. He didn't need buying back. Um, so the whole psalm doesn't apply to Jesus in that way. But what we can do, and what Jesus gives us permission to do, is to look at this psalm and almost take courage and encouragement from God um, by looking at the experiences of David and seeing how God can provide encouragement and, and help for us in our suffering, in our trials. Um, so I want to focus on verses 19 to 24 um, today. And if you have a look at verses 19 and 20, it says, Oh, how abundant is your goodness. David is saying to God, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and worked for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind. He's overwhelmed with the goodness of God. He knows this goodness of God is stored up for him. He may not be seeing it right now. He may not be feeling it right now, but he knows that goodness is there, is stored up for him, that one day he's going to experience the fullness of that. Reminds me of what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, where Paul says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard what God has prepared for those that love him. And then Paul, in fact, Paul's quoting from the Old Testament on that, that part. But then Paul goes on to say, and these things we understand by the Spirit. By the Spirit of God, we, we, we know, we have a comprehension of the fact that God has um, laid up for us good things. And the greatest of his good things is surely going to be worshipping his son forever and ever, being in Jesus' presence, praising his name, saying, hail the lamb, blessed be the lamb. That's, that's going to be our, our greatest good, our greatest blessing that we're ever going to experience. And of course, there's other goodness that we see in our life as well. So David is just absolutely uh, amazed at God's goodness for him, even in his sorrow. Also have a look at verses 21 to 22. David says this, blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was in a besieged city. I had said in my alarm, I'm cut off from your sight. But you heard the voice of my pleas for mercy when I cried to you for help. David said, I, I, I'm in a besieged city. I feel like I'm in a place where there's enemies all around me and they're encroaching on me. They're surrounding me. They're coming close. They're coming towards me. I, I feel I'm threatened. You know, he might be talking about the time where uh, Saul was trying to kill him in his life. We don't know exactly, but he's besieged. And it reminds me of a, a scene in Dunkirk, the film, where you have um, a washed up um, boat on, on, on the shore of Dunkirk. And some of the troops fight, uh, try and hide in this in this boat and they, they find refuge in this boat from from um, their attackers. They go into the boat and um um, from from the way Christopher Nolan films it, he films it from just inside the boat. And you don't know what's going ha happening on the outside. The enemies could be really close. They could be far away. One thing you do see and hear is gunshots coming through and the sense of tension is massive. Enemies just encroaching on this 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 group of, of soldiers. That's how David feels. And you might be feeling like this, feeling like this as well. The pressures of life are just um, coming in and getting closer. And, and maybe, you know, it's not just uh, maybe it's not just one area of your life where you find that there might be problems. But there's multiple areas of your life where 
family's not going well and financially things aren't going well and uh, relationally things aren't going well and all these problems seem to be encroaching on you at, at one time what does David do when he feels like he's in a besieged city what David does is he says blessed be the Lord for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me he knows God's steadfast love in this besieged city and that experience is there for us today now, David didn't just get have problems and then go, oh, but I know God loves me straight away. That wasn't his knee jerk reaction. In fact, what he did do, verse 22, I said in my alarm, I'm cut off from your sight. David was alarmed and he said, God, I'm cut off. I can't you, you, I can't speak to you. I can't. I, I know you don't hear me. I know you're not listening to me because I've got so many problems in my life. We feel like that often. But David corrects himself in this psalm. He says, no, that's not true. That's not true because I, I know blessed be the Lord. He, he showed me his steadfast love. I said in my alarm, I'm cut off. But that's not true. And how true of that is that for us? How, how good is that for us today? We are one with Jesus Christ. We're united with him, married to our saviour, Jesus. We're never cut off, even when we feel besieged, even when there's pressures from all around. We're never cut off. We can always cry out to him. That's a massive encouragement. And the last part is verses 23 to 24, where David says this, love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. He says, be strong. Let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. This is the, the way this psalm ends is fantastic because it start, the psalm starts off with lots of lament. Um, God sent a lament where David is saying to God, God, I feel like this. I feel really sad and sorrowful about this. But I know you, I know I have a truth about you. I know this is true about you. But I feel like this. And by the end, the chasm between his mind and his emotions seems to have just joined together. And he's going, no, no, I, I do. I, I love the Lord. I know his, I know his steadfast love in my life. And now he's almost encouraging other people to love God. He says in verse 23, love the Lord, all you his saints. He's saying he's good. He's, 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 he's worthy of your love. He's a God who's a lovable God. Don't want to say that word lovable. It sounds like God's a teddy bear. That's not true, obviously. You know, but he's saying, God, like, he's, he's good. He's attractive. You can love him. He's a good, good God. And have a look at that last verse. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. How can we be strong? How can we have courage? Well, we can have courage knowing that our saviour Jesus has risen from the dead. Jesus defeated the final enemy, which is death, and has been raised from the dead. And, and the security of our hope, the, the way we know we can have hope in our life, is by the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead, because that resurrection is the first fruits, Paul says, of a new creation. It's the first glimpse of a new reality, of a, of a brand new world that God is making, a, a life that conquers death which is going to be given to all of us who trust in Jesus. So we can be strong. We can take courage while we wait for the Lord.